Happy Holidays! I'm Leo from actualize.org, and in this special holiday edition, I'm going to talk about how to practice gratitude. Gratitude is a topic you hear talked about a lot if you've immersed yourself even a little bit in personal development literature or self-help books or seminars or even watching some YouTube videos or some, some TED videos. So a lot of people talk about gratitude nowadays and that's because actually the positive psychology movement which has been really active over the last 20 or 30 years has done quite a lot of research about gratitude and they've done some actual like studies and science on this stuff where they actually take people and what they do is they force them to do a daily gratitude journal or to just uh, think about the things that they're grateful for in their life. And if someone does that, is forced to do that for, let's say, 30 days, some of these studies took, did it for a whole month, and then they query the person as to how happy they are in their life at the beginning of that phase, before they were doing any gratitude work, and at the end of that phase, after 30 days of gratitude work, what they discover is that you have about a 20% increase in overall happiness and satisfaction with life. So that's a pretty cool finding, pretty popular finding. A lot of people talk about that finding. So that being the case, you know, one of the kind of one of the cliche things that people say in self-help is practice gratitude, practice gratitude. And there's something here. So let's talk a little bit about uh, how to use gratitude effectively and what you should be grateful about and also some of the ways in which it doesn't work. So one of the real advantages of gratitude here is that there's a trap. There's a trap that we fall into as we're going through our life when we're not doing personal development and we're not conscious about what we're doing. And that trap is trying to build the perfect life. I've gotten caught in this trap a lot. When I first started, it was about building that amazing career. Then I figured, okay, if I get my career into shape and I get that perfect, then uh, you know, I'm going to make sure I have a really perfect business too and I'm going to get my finances into shape too. So I want to have a perfect career and perfect finances. And then after that, I'm going to have like a perfect place to live. I'm going to buy myself that dream house in that dream place. I'm going to set it up all perfect inside, uh, have a nice car and everything there, nice furniture. And then I'm going to have a, a perfect relationship too. So I'm going to work on myself to get this relationship going. And then after I do that, I'm going to have some perfect hobbies too. I'm going to really be really great at music and I'm going to be really great at meditation. I'm going to be really, you know, well read and smart. And then I'm going to have some amazing friends. And so you get into this kind of syndrome of constructing the perfect life. And actually, I think this is one of the things that draws you into personal development is that you, you see after studying a little personal development, you're like, oh, damn, I can actually do this. It's actually possible. It's actually possible to go out there and construct a very uh, amazing life. The problem with that, though, is that it does become a, like a rat race to try to do that. And it's almost like the more you try to get there, the less you're able to get there. It's almost like uh, you can compare it to trying to hit the light barrier, right? Nothing can travel faster than the speed of, of light, at least as far as we know nowadays. And what's interesting is that as an object approaches the, uh, the maximum light speed, what happens is that that object, if it's a physical object, it actually requires more and more uh, energy to make it go faster and faster and faster. And so what basically happens is that the way this limit is regulated in nature, by physics, is that literally this object with a certain mass, it's going to require an infinite number uh, amount of energy in order to make it go at light speed, which of course is impossible. There no, uh, no amount of energy like that exists. You would need energy of the whole universe to make it go so fast. So it's kind of like that with trying to construct the perfect life. The more you're trying to put everything together perfectly, the more it then starts to backfire on you because actually what you discover is that, well, you don't have that much control over life. Like you've got control over a lot of things in your life, but you don't have perfect control. You can't set everything up perfectly. And even if you did do that, life is always changing and shifting and morphing. And so because of this, what's going to happen is that even if you do manage to construct the perfect life for one day, what happens? The next day or the next month or the next year, uh, you know, the shit hits the fan. Something gets out of line. And if you're always like paranoid about trying to put everything perfectly into place, then your life becomes actually very stressful and unhappy rather than happy. Because the whole reason you're pursuing this perfect life scenario is because you're telling yourself, well, that would be heaven on earth. That would be perfect happiness. 
actually what you learn after trying that for a few years is you see, wait a minute, this is, this is never going to work. It's impossible. It's like trying to take a bullet and make it go light speed. You're not ever going to make a bullet go light speed because it's got too much mass and require too much energy to, to hit, uh, to hit that peak. And so that's the problem here. So, uh, gratitude though is really effective for combating this, this tendency towards perfectionism in your own life and with personal development. So this is where I really like to use it. Um, and the way that it works is basically, you know, you have to, yes, you have to go out there and build that awesome life. We're all about that. Uh, that's important. But you also have to accept that like, you know what? Life is pretty good right now. I don't need the perfect car to make my life perfect. <laughs> I don't need the perfect wife or the perfect boyfriend to make my life perfect. I don't need the perfect career. Even though I can be working on all those things, sure, I could want them. I could have like a, you know, a desire for those things. But also, it's cool to just be able to stand back and say, you know what? I'm cool with what I got right now too. And in fact, there's a lot of stuff that um, I'm forgetting about. There's so much that my mind forgets about, so much stuff that I have accomplished in my life, so much stuff that I have that I was just given, that I didn't even have to work for, I was just given it. Just because of where I grew up, who my parents were, and all these other kind of circumstances that were largely, you know, not constructed by me, but I am benefiting from them. And so this is where gratitude really comes in. Now, gratitude is not to be taken as a replacement for work and discipline. This is another trap that I, that I see some people falling into, especially the more kind of hippie-ish, airy-fairy, uh, new age type of thinking, or you know, certain circles within personal development are kind of like this new, this new age stuff. And the mindset that they have there is that, well, I'll just be gratitude, everything's so perfect, everything's great. You know, we're living in this amazing time. Everything's, everything's beautiful. Every person is beautiful. Every situation is beautiful. And so what they do is they take that mindset and sure, you know, that might work great for you. Uh, if you're honestly believing that and you can, you can believe that if you want to. But then what happens is that like you actually use that as an excuse not to actually do any hardcore personal development. Like hardcore personal development means you actually have to like, you have to identify problems and challenges. You have to go and fix those problems and challenges. If you've got a, uh, low money in your bank account, that's a real challenge. You should go and fix that at some point. If you've got a career that you hate deep down inside, but then you're telling yourself, oh, everything's lovely, everything's nice, and you're being too lazy to go out there and change careers, because in fact, you're just too scared and you're telling yourself everything's nice, but actually inside, you're, you're too scared to make the career transition, then that's not serving you well. So don't fall into that trap. You still need to practice hard work, discipline, analyze your life, have goals, all this kind of stuff is still very important, but also practice gratitude. So it's not an either or, it's a both. The way that you practice gratitude very commonly is something called a gratitude journal. You can literally keep a journal, whether it's a physical journal, a notebook, maybe it's in your cell phone, maybe it's on your computer. I personally have one on my laptop. I don't like to use my cell phone for taking notes. I do it on the laptop. So that's where I have it. And there you can, you can type stuff out, type out exactly what you're grateful for. And the idea here is that it's, it's just short and simple. So literally it's just like creating a list. So what does this look like? Well, let's say you wake up in the morning, you get out of the shower, you finish your morning routine. And at the end of your morning routine, you go to your computer and then you type down five or 10 things that you're grateful for. And these can be literally, you know, a, a bunch of different random stuff. And I'm going to give you a list towards the end of this video about some of the stuff that I think you should really consider being grateful for. So that's basically it. You write them out, you think about them a little bit, and then you close your computer and you go off and you live your day. And the idea is just that practice alone right there. And it could be as, as little as two minutes. It could take you as little as two minutes to do that exercise. If you do that on a daily habitual basis, then it will increase your happiness. Because what gratitude does is it makes you feel like you don't need to chase or to seek anything anymore. And this is a really important element to being happy. To be happy, you can't be chasing after happiness. If you're chasing after happiness, you're not happy in the moment. And then when you think that you're going to, oh, well, maybe a month from now I'll actually achieve, I'll finally catch happiness. 
what happens is that you don't actually ever catch happiness because the way that your brain, your brain and your mind is constructed is that it's always coming up with new goals. So there's always the next thing that you want to seek. So your happiness, even if you do achieve something, it's going to usually be very short-lived. You're going to feel it for a day or two and then it's going to be gone. And then again, you have to chase for another year or two to achieve it. And then it's gone another day. So it's really a losing battle, this thing. Instead, what you want to do is you want to try to be happy like right now in the exact present second. Are you happy right now? Right now, as you're listening to me, are you happy? If you are, then you're happy. And if you're not happy, then you're not happy. And chasing something is not going to make you happy. You have to learn how to make yourself happy right now. And part of that is just to, to accept what the present moment is without needing to change it. When you need to change something, that's a neurotic tendency. Always having to change stuff to suit yourself. That's a very kind of neurotic and self-absorbed way to live life. A better way to live life is just to be like, hey, it's cool. Like it might not all be perfect the way I want, but who said that life is about making everything right now perfect? That's not how it works. Like, why don't I just be cool with what is? It's a much smarter way to go about it. Gratitude helps you to do this. So you can keep a journal. Another thing that I, I like to do, I actually, I'm actually doing this right now. I don't keep a gratitude journal. I haven't kept one for quite a while. I did a couple of 30-day challenges where I actually was keeping the journal. And I was doing this as an experiment to see, does it make me happier? And it was, but um, the other thing that I don't like is too much routine in my life. So for me, keeping a journal all the time, you know, opening up the computer, that can be a little bit of a hassle. So right now, what I'm personally experimenting with in my own life is as part of my morning routine, I'm incorporating a little mental gratitude exercise. So what this is, is I'm not writing anything down. Just in my own mind, as soon as I wake up, what I do is I try to come up with three things that I'm grateful for. These could be big things or these can be little things. Which brings us to the next point between little things and big things. This is an important distinction because sometimes what you'll want to be grateful for is something very big. So for example, maybe you're really grateful that you're alive and that you're healthy and that you don't have cancer. That could be an amazing thing. That's a really huge thing to be grateful for. You can also be grateful for something very tiny and minute. For example, you could be grateful when you wake up in the morning that you're lying there and you're all cozy and warm just right there in the moment, right? It's just like a little very simple thing. Or maybe as you're brushing your teeth, you can be grateful for the fact that you've got this nice toothbrush, which is comfortable to hold in your hands. And maybe when you go to, to drink your coffee, you can be, you can be grat grateful and happy that you've got this warm, just perfect temperature coffee, just the way that you like it. And it's got just the right amount of milk in it. And it's got just the right amount of sugar in it. And it's just like perfect. And you just drink that and you're like, mmm, like perfect. Right? You can be just grateful for one perfect cup of coffee or whatever, you know, whatever your, floats your boat. So big and little things. The big things are important to be grateful for. The little things also are very important. They might actually be more important. You know why? Because it's the little things that you take for granted the most a lot of times. And in the present moment, the present moment for you right now is constructed out of little things. It's not some epic thing, right? Sure, you might be grateful, for example, that you made a million dollars last year. And that could be like, whoa, that was a huge accomplishment. Maybe I'll never get that again in my life. I mean, that could be a great thing. But how often does that happen to you in your life? Not very often. Instead, what you want is you want to like be grateful for the stuff that happens consistently and frequently. So for example, if you're drinking a cup of coffee every day and you always got it pretty much the way you want, you can be grateful for that and that's going to be like happiness that you accumulate every single day. You don't need some sort of epic thing to happen to you. You don't need to buy a $100,000 car. You don't need to buy a new house. You don't need to get a new career because those things happen very infrequently. So that's why the little stuff is important. That's why it's important to focus your energy uh, and attention on, on the little things. So what I like to do is I like to mix it up, you know, in the morning, I'll have one big thing and maybe two little things that I'm grateful for. Or maybe I'll have two big things and one little thing. Uh, so try to mix that up like that. And that's it. Literally for me in the morning right now, it takes me 30 seconds to do this. You know, it's a mental habit. You have to train yourself. Sometimes you forget, but you, you have to try again and again and again until you get it more solid. So that's something that I'm experimenting with presently. And I can feel that it does increase my happiness a little bit because it makes me more appreciative of just 
uh, you know, how amazing life is. It's so easy to take it for granted. And there's tons of stuff to be grateful for. You can be grateful for so many things. I want to help you to generate some of those ideas right now. So the exercise for this video that you're going to do for me right now is you're going to come up with a list of 100 things that you're grateful for about your life. Your life. Gratitude could be something that's very personal. It doesn't have to be this generic stuff. Like people say, oh, I'm grateful for my family and I'm grateful for my health. Uh, make it very specific and custom tailored to you. So what is it in your life that's really special to you that you would really hate to lose? That is really enabling you. Like for me personally, one of the things I'm, uh, you know, I forget about this, but I'm really grateful for the fact that I got an amazing education when I was young. Like I really studied hard. I really worked my ass off. And in many ways, this put me where I am today. It set the foundation for so much for me. I'm so glad that I did that. I'm so glad that I worked so hard when I was young. Uh, like that's a very emotional thing for me. That's, I can be really grateful for that because I could have not done that. That was a very deliberate choice that I made. And I'm really grateful that I made that choice. I'm also really grateful like for the time that I live in. We're living in the 21st century now. The 21st century is an amazing time. We have so much stuff now that we take totally for granted. The technology we have, the knowledge and information we have, all this stuff is so cheap, so free. Technology is so cheap and virtually free in, in, in many situations. So it's really like, it's really amazing that we're living in this time. And also like the political climates that we're living in is so much better than it was even a hundred years ago or 500 years ago, or uh, let alone 2000 years ago. Uh, so this is all kind of stuff that you can be grateful for. I want you at the end of this video to actually sit down with either a piece of paper, a notebook, or your, your laptop or whatever, your computer, and actually come up with a list of a hundred of these things. Don't stop until you do all 100. Don't be lazy and just do 10 or just do 20. The point of gratitude is to help you see that there's actually a lot of hidden stuff that you're missing, right? You're missing a lot. And if you've never done a gratitude journal exercise before, what you're gonna discover when you sit down and actually force yourself to do this is gonna be like, oh damn, like I, I can't believe I, I forgot about this thing here and I forgot about that. And oh, five years ago I got that achievement and accomplishment. And then 10 years ago I had that cool thing happen to me that I'm really grateful for. And then, oh, what about my family? And what about that dog that I had in fifth grade? So like all this stuff will come flooding back to you. This is important because, especially if you're kind of a personal development junkie like I am, then you're very future oriented, right? You're always focusing on the future. And it's like, okay, more, 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 more. How can I get more money? How can I get a better car? How can I get a more knowledge? How can I get a better career? This is kind of like a retrospective. You take a look back. You slow yourself down. You get a little bit more contemplative, a little bit more pensive. That's a really cool uh, state to put yourself in. So what I want to end on here is kind of my list of things to be grateful for. And this is really going to be a list of categories. So I want you in your list to actually get a lot more specific than this, but this will give you a lot of ideas and trigger a lot of stuff for you, hopefully. So the first category is your home and just the coziness and comfort of your home or wherever you're living. Like how amazing is it that you get to live in this comfortable place? You're sheltered from the weather, from the heat and from the cold. It's so comfortable and warm here. You've got comfortable furniture, comfortable carpeting. You've got nice windows and you've got lighting and you've just got this like amazing place that you're living in. Think about it. 10,000 years ago, you would be living <laughs> in the forest, basically. In the forest or in the grassland somewhere perhaps in a hut, but perhaps not even in a hut. So that's, a, that's huge. How about your family and your parents? Think about all that they allowed you to do. Think about all the things that they taught you. Think about all the love that they gave you. Think about all the um, amazing adventures they took you on. Think about how caring and nurturing they were, how compassionate and understanding they were, how patient they were with you, how much time and money and energy they put into you. And if you say stuff like, well, but my family, you know, it was a dysfunctional family. And this thing here, uh, you know, uh, my, my father told me some nasty stuff. And my mom, she was a little bit of abusive to me in this. But 
Think about it, even if you had an abusive mom or you know, uh, angry dad or something, still, even for the most abusive families, there's still a lot that the family enabled you to do. It still played a critical function in your life. So there's plenty of stuff for you to be grateful there. How about your education? I already covered my education, it's very important to me. Uh, think about how you were educated, the stuff you learned, the teachers, the professors that you encountered, uh, the cool friends that taught you stuff, all the stuff you learned, all the books you read. Maybe there's that one particular book that really changed the way you think about relationships. Or maybe there's that, where there was that one book that really changed the way you think about philosophy or history. I'm sure you've got a couple of those. How about your pets? Think about the pets that you have and how much enjoyment and love they give to you. Dogs, cats, or whatever your thing is. Food. Think about the marvels of modern food. <laughs> modern food is pretty unhealthy, but also think about just what you can do with food now that you couldn't do 10,000 years ago. The kind of foods we have now are amazing. Even an apple. If you took an apple off the shelf from a... Uh, an American grocery store, and you handed it to a caveman 10,000 years ago. Well, cavemen were longer, more ago, so like a 500,000 years ago. Give it to a caveman. That caveman would look at this apple and would salivate over it. This apple would be like the most precious thing he's ever seen in his life. The apples we have now are these gargantuan, juicy, sweet apples. Take a look at one of those crab apples, which is the size of a golf ball, hard like a rock, and it tastes sour. That's what a caveman apple uh, encounter was like. So just remember all the amazing food you've got. Take a look at what you've got in your pantry. Take a look at what is there on supermarket shelves. And just recognize how cheap it is too. Literally you can go for five bucks you can get a full meal. For 10 bucks you can get a pretty great meal. For 20 bucks you can get an awesome meal. So just think about that. Think about all the options that you have there, all the amazing variety of food. Think about how much you enjoy it too, your ability to enjoy that food. How about the media? We live in a media-soaked culture. There's a lot of bad stuff that comes from the media. But still, like the ability to have entertainment so cheaply, so easily, that can entertain you, thrill you, bring you to tears, make you laugh. All this stuff is available now. It's so cheap. It's virtually free. You have access to all of it in HD now with widescreen. Think about that. Think about the effect that media, movies, film, drama, plays, music, documentaries, all this stuff has had on you, the news. How about technology? Are you grateful for technology? I mean, we literally live in the most technologically advanced time ever, probably in the history of the universe. The technology we have just in the last 20 years, the stuff that we developed is just so mind-blowing, so amazing, but it's so easy to take for granted. The cameras we have, the cell phones we have, the computers we have, the cars we have, the planes we have. You can go through and you can create a list of a hundred things just in the technology category that you can be super, super grateful for. And not just modern technologies, but also think about technologies like electricity. How cool is that? When was the last time you felt grateful for electricity or for air conditioning or for birth control? Think about what your life would be like without birth control. Think about what your life would be like without air conditioning. Think about what your life would be like without modern factories producing all this industrialized, uh, cheap products. How about your health? Cliche, but you know, health is something that you really start to appreciate as soon as you encounter health problems. I'm getting older now. I'm noticing a little bit of health issues and a little bit of like, I'm not as healthy as I used to be when I was younger, just because the body is aging. Uh, even in your 30s, the body is already starting to age. So I'm starting to become more and more conscious of that. You know, when you start to take pills, you start to notice like, oh, how nice it was when I didn't have to take any pills. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, so think about that. Think about also your physical body. The use of your hands that you have, your feet, your legs, the fact that you have your vision, your, your hearing, uh, your ability to taste, your ability to move around, to run, the energy levels that you have, all this stuff needs to be really uh, thought about, to be grateful about it. Also think about biology. Think about chemistry, think about physics. Are you grateful for these things? If you study these, and then you take a look at life, your perspective on life changes. 
Like biology is so amazing. If you study biology and then you think about just the vast complexity of stuff that's going on in your body and it's all working. It's working pretty flawlessly. Billions and trillions of cells all moving together and it's such this, this vastly complex, like mind-blowingly complex uh, organism standing right here and all working together and quite flawlessly. So it's quite amazing. Or think about chemistry, the way that all the molecules and stuff interact and how that works and it works quite flawlessly. Or think about physics. Think about how the, the physical laws work and everything, you know, moves in a certain coordination, follows certain patterns and it, it's got these like amazing, uh, amazing ways in which stuff works down to the quark level and to the, you know, it's really subatomic particles and like string theory and all that stuff. If you study that stuff and you think about how, oh my God, all this stuff works in such an amazing way, I can't believe that this is actually what reality is. And this is how it's structured. That's quite amazing. To be grateful for that. Because honestly, you could imagine a universe where you didn't have the kind of biology, chemistry, or physics that we have. You could imagine much worse universes with much worse types of physics, biology, and chemistry in it. We're lucky to live in this very rich, almost perfectly designed universe for us to inhabit. So this universe really enables us to do so much. How about psychology? Are you grateful for psychology, for your mind, and for personal development? I hope that you are. I hope you can find at least a hundred things to be grateful for about psychology, the power of your mind, the ability for you to change your life, to grow, to learn, to master yourself. This is all amazing stuff to me. How about your country? How about your state and your city? Are you grateful for that? The place that you live in is so amazing and it's so easy to take for granted. The politics that we have, the laws that we have, the court system, the police system, the fire department, the medical system. So all of this is part of the society that you live in. And no matter how bad you might say your society is, it's still amazing. Modern society, even in the worst country, is still amazing compared to what societies were like a thousand years ago. It really is amazing what we've got here with societies. There's so much to be grateful for about how society functions. And especially now, you know, it's very popular to criticize government and to bicker about, oh, this government is bad and this country is doing something evil or whatever. But in the end, like realize that overall society is extremely positive. Society promotes your development, promotes your growth, basically allows you to live the kind of life that, that you live, even in very bad societies. And if you live in a first world country, Oh man, you should be so amazingly grateful for that and all the little details about that that you often forget. How about the economy? That's really part of society too. But the economy, regardless of all the people who complain and bitch and moan about it, the economy is amazing. The fact that we even have money that allows us, you know, for me to be here doing what I do and then you to be doing something totally different and then for us to be able to exchange goods through this liquid currency that we have got, it's quite amazing how all that works. Uh, the fact that actually the economy works quite well, quite effectively, and that you can earn lots of money in it. There's an abundance of money. There's no limit to how much money you can earn. If you want to earn money, you can go and earn it. No one's really stopping you. No one really is preventing you. It's quite amazing. How about the time that we live in? The 21st century. You can think about all the amazing stuff about the 21st century that's new and fresh, that has never existed before. From the technology to the political system to to the uh, to the cultures that we have to the media that we have, like there's so much there to be grateful for. The fact that we live now instead of a hundred years ago, or five hundred years ago, or ten thousand years ago. Can you even imagine what your life would have been like if you lived ten thousand years ago? It would have been quite miserable. It would have been really, really miserable. You think that you've got problems now? Man, like, you've got no problems at all compared to the problems you would have had 10,000 years ago. So think about that. Think about the freedom and the safety you've got nowadays. Even in countries that are politically unstable, there's still a lot of safety. Way more safety than you would have had even just 2,000 years ago during the Roman days. During the Roman days, your city could be sacked by a local city. There was no countries, literally. Cities would fight other cities. There were city-states. Countries were cities. They could destroy you. They can come and rape and pillage your, your entire village or, or family or the place that you live without any legal justifications or anything like that. It was quite chaotic. Think about the freedom you've got now. 
Literally right now, you're free to do so much, almost anything. There's very few limits as to your freedom, especially if you live in a first world country. And think about your safety. Think about how safe you are now relative to all the potential dangers you could have faced just a couple thousand years ago. How safe you're kept by our society. It's really quite amazing. Also, think about awareness and think about sensation. You're aware right now. You're an aware thing, an aware being, however you want to call it, human being, whatever. But there's this thing which is awareness, which is basically your entire visual and spatial field, everything you're feeling, hearing, seeing, tasting, all of this, everything you're noticing, everything you're thinking, there's like an awareness there. This awareness is amazing if you really think about it. You could spend the next 10 years thinking about awareness and be getting to deeper and deeper and deeper, more profound levels of understanding and awe about the fact that awareness exists and just what it really is. It's a very mysterious and uh, magical thing, awareness and sensation. The fact that you've got it. Imagine if you were an ant, how much more limited your sensation and awareness would be. I mean, we don't really know, but we can kind of assume that an ant has a much more limited uh, uh, field of sensation than a human being does. They don't have as rich eyesight. They don't have as rich uh, hearing. Maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, maybe, for example, they have really good smell. But they don't have, for example, I'm pretty sure they don't have the same kind of nice eyesight that we have. And also, they don't have the kind of brains we have that allow us to have like even deeper levels of, uh, of consciousness. And what if you were like a bacterium? Think about how limited a bacterium's sensations and perceptions are. Very, very limited compared to what we've got. You can think about it like this. If what you have right now is a 4K display, these new beautiful 4K displays you might see in, this, in a TV store, uh, a bacterium, it was like, it was like a 20 pixel by 20 pixel display compared to the 4K display that we're looking at through, you know, through, our, through our eyes. How amazing that is to be living in this like very rich, a uh, universe of sensations and experiences is so cool. And lastly, be grateful for your life. Be grateful for life itself. The fact that life exists, the fact that you are part of it, the fact that you got the chance to be here when uh, a trillion other organisms didn't. And the fact that you grew up and you lived through your birth and your childhood and there were so many dangers and you escaped all those dangers and you persevered and you made it here to today. And here you are now, you're living, you're breathing. In this moment, it's this amazing, magical thing. There's a lot of other life forms around you. All of them are somehow affecting one another. We live in a universe on a planet that allows for life. What if the earth didn't allow for life? What then? Like there's, a, there's so much we take for granted here. What if we lived in a universe that just couldn't sustain life at all because of the physics that was there? or the, the biology or the chemistry just wasn't right, or the kind of life that was sustained wasn't as rich as the kind of life that we have. And just the fact that you're able to be here, the fact that you're a human being and not some other animal or some other creature. Human being, you know, one of the most um, intelligent and advanced and also stupid life forms that we've encountered so far. So think about that. Think about how grateful you should be for the fact that you've got this life. And think about how grateful you should be for the time that you have still remaining in this life, no matter where you are. Doesn't matter if you're 20 years old, 30 years old, or 70 years old, you've still got time remaining. And that right there is something to be really thankful about. So those are some of my thoughts. Those are some of the categories. I hope this jogged your memory, but I want you to come up with your own unique list. Go ahead and do that at the end of this video. And then I encourage you to post your results down below in the comment section. I'm curious to see what kind of unique and cool things you guys can come up with within your lists of things to be grateful for. So I'm going to be wrapping up here. I'm signing off. Go ahead, post me your list in your comments down below. Click the like button for me right now. Share this video, share it with a friend. It's the holiday sharing spirit. Throw it on Facebook. And finally, come and sign up to actualize.org. It's a free newsletter. I release new videos every single week about how to develop and self-actualize yourself, how to create the kind of life that you want, how to understand your psychology, how to master yourself, how to become happy, how to become fulfilled, how to become peaceful in life, 
how to become successful in life. To me, all those things are really important and really fascinating. And I love to release new free videos every single week. Sign up. There's a lot of cool bonuses there for you as well. I want to wish you a happy Christmas, happy holidays, whatever holidays you celebrate. Now is the time. So happy all of that. And I will see you soon.